Hi, welcome to Life Unravel, where we unravel life's little mysteries. Today we're going to have a look at books. We're going to go through different books for different stages and actually explain a little bit about how you can choose the right book for your child. So let's get into it. So remember that we were talking about all language has a common basis, all learning has a common basis. Language, maths, music, they all have common skills and aptitudes that we use. So the more that we use the three of them together, the better environment that we're going to have for our children. An environment rich in language will actually then promote learning language. And then that also promotes early literacy. And that's what we really want, the, these kids to have a new world opened up to them. So we've got lots of pre-literacy skills that we've been looking at. And today we're having a look at books, as I said in the introduction. So what are we actually looking for and how can we read a book so that the kids will actually want to listen? So let's go through what we're looking for. Over time, the value of books differs. So when we're babies, going through to crawlers and walkers, runners and preschoolers, we all need different things for our books and we need different things out of our books. So we have to make sure that the books that we present at these different ages are relevant for the kids at these ages. Let's have a look at books for babies. Now when we're looking at a book for a baby, we're looking for simple words. Only a very few words on each page, very clear pictures and very strong colours. Now for example, we have one of these books that I've got here, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And you can see with this book that as I open up a page, that the page has got a lot of white space on it. There's only a very few words and the colours are very strong and vibrant. Now let's have a look at another book, Where is the Green Sheep? Oh, this is one of my favourites, I really love this book. It has a great way that you can, you can actually read it to the kids. It's got good rhythm and rhyme, lots of repetition which is really important for babies. So where is the green sheep? If we have a look at one of these pages, you can see that, again, there's a lot of white space. The words are very clear. Where is the green sheep? And having all of those white spaces, the blank lines, which we know are words, but when they're babies, they won't know that, it gives them focus towards those words. So these are a couple of really, really good books. Obviously, ABC books are great for kids of this age because it really promotes them seeing those shapes of the of the different letters. Now once our kids go through and they start crawling and walking they actually need a little bit different book. We move into more rhyming books things like Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy. You can already hear that sing-songy type of, of rhythm that we can get. Dr Seuss books are fabulous for this. Oh the cat in the hat but there are thousands of Dr. Seuss books now and they all have rhyming and that rhyming is really important for the kids. They've also got more complex pictures. Let's have a look at this Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy Book. If you have a look at this book and we'll open up to just one of the pages, you can see that the colours are a little bit more subtle. It still has a very white page with your writing on it but it has a little bit more interest. And also the kids can relate to it. If you have, I'll flick through here, if you have a look, you can actually see that there are things in their environment that they will actually be able to recognize, like letter boxes. Now let's look at runners. Now runners require books that have a stronger storyline, a little bit more complex, maybe sometimes talks about things that they have done themselves or they have seen themselves. But it also looks at variety. You need some sort of storyline to make things a little bit more interesting. It's still really important that you have the rhyming and the repetition because those two parts in particular actually give the kids a very strong vocab 
for when they start reading and when they start writing on their own. So what I'd really like to look at today is the book The Pig in the Pond. This is a really fun story. It's a story of Nelligan's pig, as you can see. The pig sat in the sun. She looked at the pond. The ducks went quack. The geese went honk. The pig went oink. She didn't go in because pigs don't swim. Now, if you have a look at this picture, you can see that there's not a lot of white space in this page. You can see that the words are printed on the yellow part of the book, of the page. And you can also see there's more expressions on these little animals' faces. The pig sat in the sun getting hotter and hotter. The ducks went quack quack. The geese went honk honk. The pig went oink oink. She didn't go in because pigs don't swim. Now if we have a look at this, what's really fabulous about it is that it's now done into like a cartoon type style. And you can see that the pig's getting hotter and hotter and she's got her paw on her brow as she's sweating. You can see that the ducks and the geese are all having a bit of a conversation. Now the beauty of this book is that the kids can start piping in with their own quack quack, honk honk, oink oink. And you can see that they then have to, re have to remember if it's a one quack or a two quack or even a three quack. So they have to start becoming listening to the story. And remember we're actually been talking about how to learn to listen and this is one of the great ways that you can do that. And finally we're looking at preschoolers. Now preschoolers need much more complex stories. Fairy tales are great for them or Books with social dilemmas. Milo and the Magical Stones is a fantastic book because it has two endings, a happy ending and a sad ending. So it's really good for the kids to see the different types of endings that you can have. This age group loves information books. So encyclopedias, those sorts of books that you have around. Often Google is not quite the same, but if you can have books that they can flick through, they are great for the kids to actually start to see the world in a new way. Books about their favourite subjects is also really good and stories that they know really well. But one of my favourite, favourite books is Tuesday. Now, Tuesday is a book which is written basically without words. It's by David Weissner. Now the reason that I really, really love this book is that because simply the fact that it doesn't have very many words, but it has intricate pictures. You can see here, <clears throat> this is the start of the book, that you've got the sun starting to set and the moon starting to rise. You can see that there's a little turtle sitting there and you're sort of getting a closer and closer view of the turtle. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, comes flying frogs. Frogs on flying lily pads. And you can see them flying through the air. And it goes through a whole heap of different pictures of these frogs flying through the township. Now, what's so great about this book is that you start by saying very simple words. <clears throat> For instance, if we go back to the first page. The sun was setting... The pond was still and the turtle could hear something coming over the hill. And turn the page. <gasps> Suddenly the frogs were floating past his head. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, he said. Now I just happened to make that up as a, as a rhyming but you could make it up any, anyway. The next time that you read it, you won't remember exactly what you've read. So maybe the next time you, would, you could add a little bit more detail into your story. The sun was setting and magenta filled the sky. The little turtle looked up and could see the moon rising above the, above the water rushes. The water lily was about to open at sunset, but suddenly there was a noise. He wasn't sure where it was coming from. Oh, it's coming from behind him. Look, 
there they were sailing across the ocean, across the pond, in the air, flying lily pads with frogs sitting on top. They looked pretty smug, they looked pretty happy, but he was very, very scared. Frogs should not be flying on lily pads. And you can see, so you can change it up a lot. And the whole beauty of this is that the kids aren't focused on what is the next word that, it, that is happening. They're actually focused on the story. Then what you can do is you can get them then to start telling the story to you. And they'll love that creativity. So once you've modelled it a couple of times, then it's their turn to actually start doing the story. Don't ask them to say the story initially. You need to model it for them. So go through, have a lot of fun. There's a couple of books that I know of like this. Just enjoy it. It doesn't matter if you get it, if you fumble over your words and you don't get it right the first time. It doesn't matter. The kids will love it and they will then love to become this great creative, make this creative story. At the very, very end of the book, <clears throat> the frogs come back to the pond and their lily pads fall down and they're stuck in the water. And you can actually start to describe, have a look at that frog on the end. He is not very happy. And by starting these conversations with the kids about body language and how you look for different things is a great way to help them with their social interaction. And that's one of the really difficult parts of being four and five is trying to work out where you fit in the world and how to socially interact with other people and other kids. Thank you so much for listening. It's been great. I hope you've got a little bit out of this. We've gone through quite a lot of information here. We have a pamphlet that has some basics on it and some examples of books that I think are great for the different age levels. So just enjoy it. Have a great time with your kids and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.